Hello everybody and welcome to Arganian's Puzzle Box. In this video we'll be talking about how to set up your own node uh, for, for subsurface scattering in Blender. Now if you use uh, Substance Painter and you want to paint and then use the shader for subsurface scattering then I will show you how to activate it inside Substance Painter, apply a few textures to our uh, you know matte character provided by Substance Painter and then once we do that, I'm going to show you how to export the textures and use them in Blender, how to set them up in the node editor in order for you to get the right um, uh, settings. Because I know there are people out there who are struggling with this and maybe it's not, you know, it's not easy enough to find information how to set, how to set this up properly in Blender. You'll find information how to set it up for, you know, using uh, Blender's own sub subsurface scattering settings you're probably not going to find a lot of information as to how to, to use the texture that you export from some other software such, such as Substance, Substance Painter. God, there's a lot of S's in this uh, tutorial. Right, so um, if you don't know what subsurface scattering is, it, it's basically the light bouncing on a surface and then being absorbed by that surface. Light inside the surface will bounce from you know point to point until it eventually comes out. Uh, and it will be changed a little bit. It will create a bit of a, a different tonality to the to the uh, color of the surface. Now, the best way to imagine this is uh, taking a flashlight and uh, lighting it up, uh, you know, underneath your fingers, and then the reddish hue formed around the fingers. That's basically the uh, light that has penetrated the skin and then bouncing out. Um, and that, that will be a perfect example of it. Now, this does allow, uh, sorry, um, this does provide a lot more realism to your texturing, and it will definitely help you to improve, uh, the, you know, all the texture work that you do for your model, uh, be it a, a character or I don't know, a skeleton or whatever surface absorbs light basically, and then bounces it out. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. Thank you, and uh, let, let's get to it. So now that we're in Substance Painter, uh, we want to go over here and open our sample, which is our little mat here, meat mat. Um, now he's loaded, he's got three texture sets, which is fine, it's not a problem. Uh, let's delete this layer over here, as we don't, we don't actually need it for now. And what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to keep it at 2K, there's no point going at 4K. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add the channel for scattering, which you, can't, which you basically can see over here that it doesn't... Is not yet set up so we uh, press on this plus sign and we have the scattering option over here which is fine that's now the channel is now in so when we add a fill layer you can see that we've got this material over here now uh, called scattering now over here just make sure that we are going into a positive um, side of things rather than being on a negative side for scattering again it's it's depending on your preferences and your settings so depending on what you want to do with it so we now have this set up, but nothing is actually happening. I mean, if we go to the fill layer and we change its color to, let's say, a, a red, something like that, um, there's no there's no sub subsurface scattering happening as of yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our shader settings over here, and this is where we got subsurface scattering parameters, which is already enabled. Now we can change the color to something else, let's say, a, you know, this red color over here and you know increase the scale as well but you can see that nothing is happening still so what we need to do now is we need to go into our uh, display settings and we've got an option here called activate subsurface scattering so we're going to press that and now you can see something has changed yeah you see that's the, that's basically over there that's that's a sub subsurface scattering now if we increase the sample count that would make things a lot more uh, well less noisy but it also will decrease your performance as well um, so now that we've got it applied, I would, I would definitely not keep the sample count too high when we're, you know, we're still working. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to add a bit of variation to it just to, you know, just to see how things are. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to take this fill layer, uh, maybe change its color to, um, something like a yellowish color. And you can see that red, that's the subsurface scattering right there, that's red hue. Because if we go into our shader settings and we change this to something else, you can see how that changes as well, yeah? So I think that's gonna be okay. The next thing that I want to do is I wanna right click this uh, fill layer and just have this option over here where it says instance across texture sets. We'll do that and we'll select the body and the base and press okay. 
and now we've got subsurface scattering well we've got this same material spread across the the whole model uh, but we're not really seeing the effect which is quite you know quite uh, interesting um, if we press each of these basically uh, so we're now in the body for example and we want to see why there's no subsurface scattering um, that's because well actually um, this should work it's quite interesting that it doesn't so the instance doesn't seem to apply the subsurface scattering now all we're gonna do is let's delete this let's go back to our head over here and let's just copy the layer and paste it over here um, which interestingly interestingly enough ah uh, i'll tell you guys why it doesn't work right i just remember see you always learn something so let's go back to our head and make sure that we instance this across the uh, body again as well and the base we we obviously want it over there we haven't added a channel that's the problem so if you go to the to the body and we add a scattering channel that's it there we have it we have scattering and now the base uh again oh not specular that's not what I meant to do. I meant to add scattering, and now you can see that we've got um, we've got subsurface scattering across the whole model, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to export these uh, as textures and use them in Blender. So the next thing that we want to do, just excuse the amount of layers that we've got over here. It's by a mistake. Uh, we're going to go into File and then Export Textures. And in the settings bit here, we can just leave them at 2K. So the general settings at 2K, that's fine. Uh, you know, 16 bits, or you can go eight bits, but let's just leave it at 16. But it really depends on what sort of shader you had active as well, and what sort of applications you're going to use it in. Uh, and then for the output templates, I've got my own for a Blender and Marmoset uh, setup. But basically, this is what you need to do. Look, just look at the, just uh, have this screen on um, and, you know, just have a look at these, how I set up these textures. And this is the subsurface scattering over here, which is a gray, um, it's, it's a gray um, channel, basically. Yeah, uh, a gray channel that I've uh, created. Um, so, you know, we create a gray and you drop in the scattering on top of it. And that's basically it. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I am indeed using um, the Blender Marmoset setting over here. And now we're going to export the textures and uh, we'll, we'll see each other in, uh, in Blender. Right, so we're now in Blender. So let's get our uh, mat imported. We'll just do import Wavefront, uh, you know, uh, OBJ. That's how we save them. Uh, there he is, meet Matt, and here is our model now. Uh, what we want to do now is we need to go into, you know, move on to viewport shading in order to see the textures that we're applying. If we go over, if we select Matt and we go to our materials, you can see that we've got head, body, and base. Uh, let's just open another viewport over on the left side, like so, and then change that into a shader editor. And this is our material for the head. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to drag our textures in. So I'm just I've got them over here saved. Now for the purpose of this uh, you know uh, sort of tutorial that we're doing here, uh, we only need the uh, subsurface scattering. We need the ambient occlusion and we need the base color. So we're just going to drop the base color over here. This is for the head. Uh, this is the ambient occlusion and this is the subsurface scattering. Now, in order to get all these three to properly work together, so we can get you know a proper effect over here, uh, we need to set up the remaining nodes. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to add a mix RGB, and then we'll copy that and paste it in order to have two of these uh, working together. Uh, we'll get our base color connected to one of them. And then we'll get one of these uh, mix RGBs to the next one over here. And we want to change them both to uh, multiply, right? We've got an ambient, ambient occlusion over here. So what we need to do is we need to add a color ramp to it. And we connect it over like so. And then the color ramp, we want uh, one of the colors to go into color two over here. But then we also want to add a math um, node over here and we put the, the second color ramp, you know, another another node over into the math, which will change 
the math will change it again to, well, let's say multiply again. Yeah, okay. And this will put it to our specular for, uh, you know, meet uh, Matty over here. Uh, then what we want to do is we want to add this uh, multiply, we put them into the base color base right now, yeah? So in, in essence, we should be having our ambient occlusion set up um, like, like we're supposed to. So if we uh, play with the settings a little bit, you know, you can clearly see um, the results that we have in there right now, yeah? So this is our ambient occlusion sort of occluding. <laughs> the uh, mesh as you can see right okay uh, now what i want to do is I want to do the same thing for the subsurface uh, modifier so we are going to add the color ramp and the multiply we'll copy and paste them and we want to connect the subsurface modifier to the color ramp and then the multiply um, over into our subsurface like so and for some reason we get a uh, very black <laughs> sort of um, um, effect but this will all change we'll move the color ramp over into here now you can see that this color is quite strange so we need to play with our values of the multiply uh, it's very important that you get this correctly so maybe something like that um, and then again, you know, you got to play with the settings in order to get the desired effect. So I think in our case, we probably need something like that. And then our ambient occlusion is probably a bit too strong. So what we can do is we can play with it a little bit like so. Right, but we're not seeing the, you know, we're not seeing the uh, effect of this very well. So let's just move that to non-colored and see if it has any effect. And to be honest, I don't, I don't really see any any real difference between the two modes right but let's just go into render mode and so i'm using ev at the minute we've got no light in the scene though so we just need to add a light i'm just gonna add a um, let's do a point light and then i'm just gonna move it over here now our light is not very strong so in the light settings let's just say 0 0.02 megawatts yeah something like that and you can see that you can see the subsurface scattering right there, yeah? Uh, I think I'm just gonna increase the radius, uh, maybe something like that. And, you know, let's just move it. So you can see, yeah, you can, if we take the shadows off, you can see the subsurface scattering uh, as it uh, basically is being applied when you move the, um, when you move the light around, yeah? You can see it over there on the edges. That's the subsurface. Now, what we want to do now is we want to play with these values to get the, the sort of the result that we want. And, and you can, you can, as I said, you can basically, you know, if you want to get a nice effect, you're just going to have to balance it around until you get whatever you're looking for. Now, this is a very basic example that we did here. And what I mean by this is if you would have a, a character that uh, is textured with, you know, proper textures like skin textures and so on, the effect would be that more noticeable. Uh, but right now, this is very basic. It's following a curve of the shapes that we have. There's no normal map applied in here in order to get more uh, results. I mean, we can add those other textures, but they won't make much difference because the, the model itself is going to look as it was in uh, Substance Painter. And again, you can add more nodes in here to play with the color tones and add more, you know, uh, vibrance to it if you want to. That's why we have, you know, we've got color ramps and so on that we can keep on adding upon this but but this is the basic setup in order to get a, an image texture like we have over here from a program like substance painter or, or in a base color and ambient occlusion how to get them set up for your model and you know just to do it very simple for the other ones you basically want to go to your material uh, you want to copy all of these over here and you know in the material you go to body and you paste them in and now all you need to do is to just link the nodes so you know it's it's quite simple once you once you set it up once uh, it's going to be quite simple to get all the other uh, parts in there so you know we can we can do that and obviously we don't have all the we don't have the textures yet which is going to uh, you know if i go over here and i say so this is the body um same thing i'm just going to drag them in um this is the subsurface right so we do color um 
sorry we just get the color over here and then the color over here and now if we can see we've got sub subsurface scattering in there um, you know basically playing with it with it in the environment and if you want to see this a bit more clearly then you can go over here to the material of the background and you know change it to a, a you know a darker a darker color maybe you know maybe go over here and, and just remove these um, maybe you don't want to see anything else apart from 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 the from the render and yeah this is this is basically a, the this is the subsurface scattering with a texture now as i said to you before bear in mind this is quite different than from what you can set up in blender uh, on its own i mean it can probably achieve the same results but we're looking here to get our subsurface scattering from inside substance painter which you know in, in that program you can tweak it probably a lot more than you can in blender depending on your skill level so i hope you guys found this video useful and you've learned something uh, something good here and if you did please leave a like uh, subscribe subscribe to my channel and also comment if you if you want to know more if you have any suggestions as to this material setup maybe there's a better way a more uh, a refined way i mean this is the this is the one that i found and i've been looking online and it's been quite difficult to get to the bottom of it but this one it's, has worked the best for me so i'll see you guys in my next video and, and i hope you you enjoyed this one so have a good one thank you